If you're watching this video, you are watching either the MVVM introduction course or you're watching the local database caching course on my website. So if you go to codingwithmitch.com and you scroll down, you're either watching the local database caching course or the REST API course with MVVM and Retrofit. So you don't want to you want you don't want to skip this video because since I've made those courses, the API that they interact with has changed. So originally the API that they interact with was foodtofork.com. It was a website that displayed uh, recipes for cooking and you could go in there and search, you know, hundreds of recipes and they have a they had an open source API that you could use that I built the apps on top of. The apps communicate with those. But since then, it's been shut down. So you can see here I have Food to Fork on my screen and it is no longer gonna be available. So what we have done, me and somebody, actually it wasn't even really me, it was a, a fan who watches my courses. He actually, he, he stripped the data from Food to Fork and he posted it up to another, uh, to a Heroku app. So the, what I'm trying to say here is that things have changed. You're gonna have to make a small alteration in your code when you move through the course because Food to Fork is no longer available, obviously. So right now, this is not going to make any sense to you because you are just uh, you're just starting the course. But when you so when you actually go through the course, there's a constants file in the source code. So if inside of the util package, I'll actually close this just to kind of clean this up a little bit. Inside of the util package right here, there's a constants file. And inside the constants file, it used to have this URL right here. So it's foodtofork.com. Now the only change that you need to make is to change the URL to this one right here. So we have uh, recipesapi.herokuapp.com. And you also used to need uh, API keys to interact with the API. Through, to authenticate a, a user and use their data, but you don't even need that anymore. You will need the placeholder, so just uh, you know, create a constant named API key and have it equal to blank. And you know, as you're watching this right now, this is going to make no sense to you, obviously. But as you go through the course, uh, when I actually build this constants file in the course, just make note of it. May, remember that in this video, the the URL has changed, so we're no longer interacting with foodtofork.com. You have to change the URL to recipesapi.herokuapp.com, and then everything will work exactly the same. So if I was to pull, you know, a, an emulator on the screen here and just run the app. Uh, this is the app that we would be building. You have a list of categories on the first screen. If I was to, you know, I can manually search for recipes that contain chicken. There you can see that progress bar and then the chicken recipes come out. And this is reading it from that Heroku app uh, that Simran, his name is Simran, has, has stripped from Food to Fork. So all the data is taken from foodtofork.com and we posted it on a new, new API. So that's pretty much all you need to know. Just remember that we are no longer interacting with foodtofork.com. We're interacting with this URL right here. And literally everything else in the course is going to be the same. So anytime I, I reference food to fork in, in the course, just basically ignore me and say, and remember that I built this course while food to fork existed. It does not exist anymore. And also as a side note, if you want to thank the guy who took the data, so he, he took his own personal time to do this, by the way, I was going to deprecate the courses and remove them from my website or possibly make them free because they no longer work. Um, but he took the time to, um, to fix this and he stripped the data on his own. I didn't ask him to do this. He just did it. Uh, this guy right here, I am Simran.dev. Look for him on Instagram, follow him and thank him because otherwise I, uh, you know, the MVVM introduction and the local database caching course probably wouldn't exist anymore. And there's a lot of really valuable skills that you learn in that course. You know, it's uh, it take if you look at the watch order on my website. So the the order I recommend watching courses in. You start with the Escalate for Beginners 2019. Then you get an introduction to retrofit and MVVM architecture. So you're slowly kind of uh, building your skills. Next is you take your skills to the next level by building a database cache uh, so that you're, you can build an offline first application. So the app functions the same offline as it does with no internet connect or yeah, with no internet connection as it does with an internet connection. So that's obviously really important. Uh, those, these two courses in this location in the, in the courses, um, in the syllabus, I guess you would call it. And they're really important because they're, they kind of slowly transition you into the more advanced concepts uh, that is Dagger 2. So it would be a little much, I think, to go from Esculate for beginners to Dagger. Uh, these two really fill that sort of transition from beginner to a more intermediate uh, developer. So really, really, I just want to say thank you again, Simran. You're probably watching this video, so thank you. I really appreciate that. And everybody else, I'm sure, uh, thanks you too. So that is probably going to be 
it for this video. Just remember to change that URL. We are no longer interacting with Food to Fork. We're interacting with that Heroku app. And remember to say thanks to Simran. So go to his Instagram, uh, follow him and say thanks because he put his own personal time into this. He gained nothing from this other than just to help me and help you guys. So thanks again, Simran, and I'll see you in the next video.